another video. Today we're going to go ahead and cover my top 10 fall of 2016 designer fragrances. Now this list is a little bit overdue. I generally tend to like to do these videos a month before the season actually starts. But unfortunately I was actually in the process of moving for the prior time so that's why it's a little bit late this time. But be it rest assured, here it finally is and you're going to be followed up with the niche list uh, shortly after this video is released, a couple days. So be on the lookout for that as well too. Now, before I get started, quick design, uh, some quick ground rules real quick. The first ground rule is that this is my list, my curated list only. These are the fragrances that I plan on wearing. So what I mean to say by that is these fragrances are not necessarily meant for other people uh, or as other people's top complimented or a fragrances that I would consider the top complimented or your best complimented fragrances or the best fragrances that you would wear in the fall. These are the fragrances that I am going to wear. So uh, that's the caveat for this. So hopefully it gives you guys some suggestions of what to look for and uh, you know what you're looking for in a fall fragrance. Now the second point is what I'm looking for in a fall fragrance. I'm looking for a fragrance that does well in the, in the cold weather primarily, but is not too much of a slouch in the heat as well too. So it's primarily a cold weather fragrance. I like uh, fragrances that do that have that kind of both ability, if you will. The reason being is because I live in New York, and in New York we have it. It ranges from pretty hot in the August, you know, uh, early September, but it starts to cool down significantly between September uh, and the end of October to the point where, in some years, at the end of October it was snowing. So you know, that's just kind of the kind of rains that I'm talking about here. Um, and that's the essentially it, if you will, uh, for my criteria. So with that, let's go ahead and get started into the list. Now, fragrance number 10 in the list is a fragrance from the house of Tom Ford. We have Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. Now, this fragrance uh, is one that, to me, I like using it when you're going out and, and it's a little bit on the cooler side. So this is a fragrance that I generally tend to wear towards the end of fall, almost towards the winter uh, type scenario. And the reason that I do it is it has a, a very dark scent. It has a very, uh, a very almost mysterious vibe to it. And it's one that I tend, tend to wear when uh, I'm going out at night when I don't know certain people that are with it. So it kind of gives you a mysterious vibe and kind of almost brings people in, if you will. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But that's why I wear Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. So Noir Extreme at number 10. Coming in at number 9, we have a fragrance from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. We are talking about Yves Saint Laurent's L'Homme. Now, L'Homme, I love this scent. And the reason why it's not higher on the list is just you know, I'm putting it a little bit out of my rotation, but it's still there. Uh, this is almost like an apple pie-like fragrance. It's very smooth, it's very rich, inviting, it's light at the same time, but if you apply a little bit heavier, it can definitely, you know, go out there and be an overpowering scent. So, Lom has garnered me a great deal of success. Compliments out the wazoo, and it just fits my R1 personality, and I tend to wear it at work when I know that I have a special event kind of going on or something where I know that I'm going to be in a room with a bunch of people just because whenever I wear this one out, they definitely notice it and they definitely compliment on it. And that usually leads to a question about, oh, do you collect fragrances, etc., etc. Um, and that pretty much sums it up. So at number nine, we've got Loa. Number eight, we have a fragrance from the house of Perry Mugle. We have, or Mugle, if you will, we have Pure Havan. Now, Pure Havan, almost always on my fall list for good reason. This is a Cuban cigar, but it more it's like a, it combines angel men, uh, for those of you who know, which is like a dark chocolatey patchouli scent, and it combines it with like a Havana cigar, a, a, a Cuban cigar, if you will, type of a vibe to it. But really, it kind of smells like a cherry-ish type of a vibe coming from it, which is really a nice scent, and it's one that I generally, generally tend to wear in casual situations. This is one of my casual workhorses during the fall. When I'm not quite sure exactly what to put around and I'm just going out, I'll throw on Pure Havon and it'll do absolutely fantastic. Now, this is another one that I generally tend to wear a little bit closer toward the end of the fall as a lighter scent, if you will, okay? So, number eight, we've got Pure Havon. Number seven, the fragrance we have at number seven is from the house of Dolce & Gabbana. We have Dolce & Gabbana's The One. Now, unfortunately, I still haven't gotten the better version of this, in, in my opinion, which is The One EDP. This is The One EDT. 
uh, but it still is absolutely fantastic. The difference between the two mainly that I found is that the one EDP lasts a lot longer than this one, but this actually fits the purpose that I'm actually looking for it for, and more of a lighter fall scent, if you will, is when I throw the one uh, EDT on, and I generally tend to use this a little bit um, not necessarily conservatively, but uh, I'm looking for the opposite word. I, I use it um, freely, if you will, um, and just just I, pr I spray a lot of this sucker on. I generally tend to wear this one to work, just because it's such a it ha it doesn't have the projection and the power that I have for most of my other fall fragrances. So it's a little bit safer to wear at work. So you smell like almost like a dried, a fruity type of a vibe coming from this actual scent. So we've got at number seven, Dolce Cabana's The One EDT. Coming in at number six, we have a fragrance from the House of English Laundry. We have Oxford Blue. Now this scent is another scent that I've actually reviewed. This one, it's kind of a weird one, but it's something that's been growing on me a lot, and I definitely plan on wearing this one in fall a lot more. It's kind of got this like chalky type of a vibe to it that I found the more and more that I actually wear it on my skin. But it is a darker scent, comes off a little powdery at times, and it's one that I generally tend to wear going out at night, and one that I plan on wearing going out at night a little bit more. So English Laundry's Oxford Blue. Coming in at number five, we have another fragrance that is on the powdery side. This one is from Van Cleef and Arpels. This one is Midnight in Paris. Yes, the absolutely stunning, beautiful bottle. This one is a powdery scent. It's got, uh, I believe it's got, it's either lavender or I forgot what the actual note was. But either way, this is a scent that I generally, this is my casual night out scent. If I'm not sure what to wear at going out at night, I'll throw this sucker on and I'll be done with it. I don't wear this one to work just because I found with this fragrance, it can be something that really projects off your skin out of nowhere. It's one, something that goes from you know, down here to all of a sudden way up here, and it's just crazy on that. So I generally tend to wear this one at night where going crazy is no real consequence at the time. All right, so Van Cleef on Art Bells, Midnight in Paris. Coming in at number four on the list, we have a fragrance that has grown on me quite a bit. It's from the house of Dior. It is Fahrenheit. This is the original formulation, for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm actually not sure what the difference is between the original formulation and some other formulations. All I know is that this one smells a little bit like petrol or gasoline. Not the gasoline that you pump at the gas station, but actual petrol. Um, and it's just, uh, it's actually fantastic. I love the way that it smells and it comes off very original on, on my skin and for that, you know, I started wearing this a lot more and fall just seems like the perfect time to wear it. I can't really describe it other than the actual feeling that I get when I get it. I just feel at ease when I'm wearing this one at fall. You know, I know I smell different, I know I smell good, it's just something that I'm in love with in the fall and it's climbing up my fall list rapidly. I used to hate this scent. You know, if you look at my earlier videos, I did not like this scent at all, and it's just one that has grown on me more and more and more to the point where I like it. And unfortunately, I don't get that many compliments with this one. I think I've only gotten a compliment two or three times uh, when I was wearing this one, so it's not huge on the compliments, for me at least. You may have better success than I do, all right? So at number four, we've got Fahrenheit. Coming in at number three, we have a fragrance from the house of Boss or Hugo Boss, we've got Boss Bottled number six, or Boss Bottled, Boss Bottled number six. This fragrance is my workhorse for the fall, and by workhorse, I literally mean I can wear this one almost any time that I feel like it. Casually, going out, going to play tennis, going to play basketball, going to you know um, a dinner at night with friends, going out to a bar, going, uh, you name it, going to work, you name it, I can wear this fragrance and it is no slouch. This is apple pie almost, it's got a spicy vibe to it, and it's got a little bit of a mature vibe to it at times. I absolutely love the fragrance, and I think you know it is well deserved to come in where it's coming at number three, all right? So we've got Boss Bottled. Coming in at number two is a fragrance that was put on to me from an, another reviewer. This reviewer actually gave me the fragrance, told me to review it, he actually had me smell it. So if you look around, uh, do search for some videos, you'll see this video up. It is Bentley Intense. This fragrance, you know, don't knock it, don't knock it. This is from the house of, ben, house of Bentley. They made cars, but they made a fragrance. 
it's no slouch. This one smells very similar to another favorite fragrance of mine, Chambre Noir. This is a dark, it's a resinous scent, but at the same time it's kind of this play doh fun type of a vibe to it, and it does absolutely fantastic. So this one is my go-to at night. This is my number one fragrance at night in the fall uh, for, uh, you know, just, you know, for nighttime occasions, basically. It's just that good to me. Don't knock it, give it a try, Bentley Intense. And my number one fragrance for the fall, you may have a clue what this sucker is based on my past likes, and it is still there, it's still going strong. My wife killed off a bottle of this sucker. We're talking about Pure Malt from the Palace of Dairy Moogler. This is a fantastic fragrance. We got chocolate, patchouli, whiskey, mixed in, and it's just magical. I love it. It has, you know, a very playful vibe, a very fun vibe, they smell great, people love the smell of you, you feel confident, you feel great, and it's just an absolute fantastic gem. All right, so that's my number one fragrance for the fall, Pure Malt. All right, so that's my top 10 designer fragrances list. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free, send me a note, leave me a message, do whatever you gotta do. I'm always curious, I wanna hear what your top 10 lists are, I wanna see what people are wearing, what they're throwing on, and you know, other people will take that advice and use it for themselves, all right? Thank you guys, take care of yourselves, and you guys have a great day.